Welcome back. For months, we've been feeling the strain on our wallets. So what is President Obama doing about it anyway? Gasoline and oil, the very lifeblood of the American economy. We rely on it to get us to work, to run our businesses, to harvest our food, to heat our schools. And there's an oil and gasoline footprint on virtually everything we do. Oil and gasoline matter to us a lot. Since President Obama took office, gasoline is up over $2 per gallon. That translates to nearly half a trillion dollars of our hard-earned wealth stripped from Main Street Americans and deposited into the bloated bank accounts of Middle Eastern sheiks and leftist dictators like Ahmadinejad in Iran, Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, and Putin in Russia. So why would the Obama administration ignore a massive and unprecedented increase in gasoline prices? There's only one answer. It's because they have no answers. Listen to the man in charge of our energy policy, Energy Secretary Stephen Chu. Chevy Volt, do you drive one? Uh, no, it, I don't own a car at the moment. In trolling the, uh, the cost of gasoline at the pump, do you give yourself an A minus? I would say I would give myself a little higher. They give themselves an A? Gas is up 115%. Prices for everything are skyrocketing. Food, clothing, airline tickets. Yet they give themselves an A. Denial, delusional, or both. It's an election year. You'd think they would be more concerned. You'd think they'd have some studies, some research, some solutions. Here's what all the president's men came up with to solve our dependence on foreign oil. There are things that you can do individually, though, to save energy. Making sure your tires are properly inflated. Getting regular tune-ups, you can actually save just as much. Algae. If we can figure out how to make energy out of that, we'll be doing all right. President Obama, Secretary Chu, EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson, and Secretary of the Interior Ken Salazar. Just stop. Stop and listen for the next few minutes. Listen, learn, implement these ideas, and you may save the middle class hundreds of billions of dollars. You may bring prosperity back to America. Ignore it, however, at your own political peril. Jeez, do you see, Eric? Mm. This is part of that fundamental transformation of America that we were promised during the campaign to increase the price of energy in America. And now these bogus claims about uh, America not even having the resources available to us. Are they listening, Gov? Well, Are they in the White House right now? watching this program and listening, taking notes maybe. That, that's the question. Why are they not listening? Because we, we have experts here in this room. We have everyday moms and dads and students and business owners with common sense ideas on how to provide solutions to the energy challenges in America. What do we have? We have experts here. Can, can we, can, can I? Reagan was here, you know what he would say? President Obama stopped destroying the oil industry in the United States. Sure, sure. API, American yes. Petroleum Institute. Anything we said that's wrong here so far? No. As a matter of fact, uh, the policy that we see is a policy to tax the industry more. And you don't need uh, a study, and we do have a study. Congressional Research Service looked at this and said, if you bring these new taxes on, it'll increase gasoline prices and it'll reduce in energy independence. So you can go in that direction or you can grow the tax base grow the resource space, increase the jobs, and increase that energy security. And it's a very clear, very sharp choice. We have a lot of opportunities in this country to go for energy that we're not going for. And we certainly have the prices are high enough. So the only thing we can do as a nation is look at to our supply, look to our demand. What can we do to affect that change? And it can have an impact not just on us, but on the price that everybody pays around the globe. If we can have the opportunity to bring these resources to the market, there is a lot there, and we really, really would like... Uh, there is a lot there. There is a lot there, and it just takes political will. We have the manpower. We have the resources. We have the technology. It just takes the political will. Now, when we hear these claims that there isn't enough resource, and yet we're not uh, given the allowance to even get out there and explore, What's the answer there? What do you propose that the president, the White House, do there? Well, Governor, we've had rigs leaving the Gulf ever since President Obama uh, put the moratorium in place in the Gulf after the oil spill. We've had the Western Gulf shut off, the Atlantic shut off, parts of Utah, Montana shut off, Alaska, as you know. The drilling, the companies want to drill. That The reserves are there. Right now, we're not being allowed to be able to look for our own energy needs, and then the regulations on top of that makes it more expensive to use the fuel but, we but are Governor, getting. You, 
there's no oil in Alaska. There's not much oil. Oh, and, and don't even get me started, man. In fact, the next segment, that's what we're going to talk about, is just that little corner of our world, what Alaska has to provide. But we hear these claims from our president now that, heck, nothing to worry about. Move on, move on. Production's up. Is production up? Production's up. No, it's not yeah. Is it due federal to federal no. the White House policies that production the is up? The White House has done everything they can to stifle production on the lands that they control, every inch of it. Where production is up, it's on state and private lands. And the funny thing is they always say, well, if we do start drilling today, it'll be 10 years before it comes to market. That means the oil coming up now is 10 years ago in its origins. He can't claim credit. Has anyone heard President ago. Obama say that we use 20% of the world's oil, but we only have how much? 2% of the world's reserves? Says. Can we throw up that chart, guys? I've been thinking this is chart number three. This is from the Department of Energy. This is their study. There's that 2%, that little red dot way at the tippy top there. What's underneath it are technically recoverable barrels, barrels of oil shale, and barrels of undiscovered resources. Governor, well, a lot he, of more. you know, he plays this game of semantics and he talks about this subset, this 2% of reserves, and it has to do with technical recovery and economic recovery. But no, God has created underfoot for us, for man's responsible use, these untold trillions of cubic feet of natural gas and billions and billions of barrels of oil for our use responsibly to secure our union. They're here in America. We should be tapping into them. We'll talk about just that corner of the U.S., Alaska, and what we have to offer. In the meantime, where's my driller? Where's my driller? How do we know how much oil and gas we have? Do we know how much is there? Are we sure that there's not a huge find waiting to be found somewhere? Let I don't me, know, Texas, let me Kansas. Give you a quick example, Eric. Five years ago, natural gas prices were off the charts, record highs, okay, because they thought we were running out and they said we didn't have the reserves. What that did was bring capital to the market and drillers kicked in gear. Fortunately, a lot of the gas was underlying private lands and we didn't have to rely on federal lands. Mm -hmm. In five years, we're now at a surplus. Five years. Can we do the same thing with oil? Yes. First thing we have to do is get the government and the people in this country to recognize that those minerals belong to the taxpayer. They don't belong to the White House. They don't belong to Congress. They belong to the taxpayer, and we should have a right to extract from it. And you're talking supply, supply economics, too, is supply side, and we're going to talk more about that also because, yes, natural gas price is down because finally we have the supply to meet some demand. Exactly, and that's coming up next. Governor's going to break it all down for us coming up. I offered the President Obama an answer, but shockingly, he never called. My secret plan to fix our oil problem that's coming up right after the governor breaks down the natural resource issue.